Mario is the number one best-selling video game franchise in the world. He's appeared in over 200 games with over 400 million units sold. He is arguably the most recognizable video game character ever created. And with all of that success comes bootlegs. You know, weird and interesting games that were sold in other countries that weren't even licensed or acknowledged by Nintendo at all. Some of the more interesting Mario bootlegs, at least to me, are the ones that don't even appear on Nintendo consoles at all. Consoles like the Sega Genesis. So today we're going to be taking a look at three Mario bootleg games that appear on the Sega Genesis. Let's get started. First up, let's take a look at Super Mario World 64 for the Sega Genesis. I am not even joking that that's the actual name. It's me, Mario! Oh, that music! It's totally giving off that Mario, not Mario feeling. You know? Well, it, it certainly looks like a Mario game. I can't really fault it for that. Just, just look at this and come to terms with your life. There is a Sega game called Super Mario World 64. And it already looks like they stole a bunch of assets, including the Super Mario World title, which they didn't even remove the trademark for. Then look at this, you got the Mario All-Stars background with a few minor tweaks. Here's the Mario All-Stars title for reference. Let's also not forget the beginning where it said, It's a me Mario. Me Mario. I think the only thing that I could recognize as being custom is the number 64. Well, that and the Blue Goomba. Totally different series, got a Blue Goomba. Wow, a story. Welcome, this is Dinosaur Land. In this strange land, we find that Princess Toadstool is missing again. Looks like Bowser's at it again! Boom! Nailed it! 10 out of 10! Just like Nintendo! Rapid Party's gonna be at Applebee's? I'm driving. Well, hey, look at that! It's like I'm playing Super Mario World! I mean, it looks like a Mario game, it doesn't look that bad! I mean, sure, it's got the assets ripped right from Super Mario World, but at least we know we're looking at something nice. Maybe this could actually be a good game. Oh wait, no, it's, it's bad. I think the first thing to mention about this game is that these controls are horrible! Mario has this really weird momentum mechanic. It took me a little while to figure out, but you have to walk a little bit and then he builds up momentum over time. So there's no real run button per se. I'm trying to think if I can accurately describe how bad these controls really are. The controls would be like if someone walked up to Super Mario World and was like, mm, 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 See, I like this, I like this. Let's change everything! Mario the Cripple! Let's say, uh, it's gonna be a big hit. It's, uh, gonna sell really well in the elderly crowd, you get my meaning? You've probably noticed by now that every time you jump, instead of this really soft... ...sound, you get this really absurd spring noise. Like I said before, there actually doesn't appear to be a run button of any kind, you're just building up momentum as you walk. Which is just really strange and jarring because my mind associates these graphics with different gameplay. Oh yeah, halfway point. It's good to see that there's some similarities between these two games. So when you die, the sound just cuts completely out to silence? Just nothing? Nothing at all. Okay? Wait, what? I'm at the beginning again? That halfway point wasn't actually a halfway point? That is just cruel. This game is actually pretty tough, and it only gets harder from here. Alright, I beat the level. The second level and all the subsequent levels end up being the same type of thing. It's a platforming game, so you get to the end of the level. The problem is, is the game gets super cheap, and even with normal platforming segments like this one, it's almost impossible because of the controls. Come on, come on, come- No! They start to mix it up, letting you climb on the walls like you could in Super Mario World. Except, none of the mechanics work the same way. In fact, most of the enemies don't have the same properties, so it's really confusing. Like these Koopas on the wall, you can't just knock them off by plopping them on the head. They actually kill you if you touch them. So the enemies become more like obstacles in an obstacle course. Is that? Yeah, that's the Jeopardy theme. They literally just use the Jeopardy theme. Why? The last level is literally a maze that's designed to trap you until you run out of time. And not only does it have traps and lots of enemies, it has tunnels that take you back earlier in the level. Like look at this section where you have to time your jump perfectly to jump on this platform. If you fail, you get killed by the mushroom. If you don't time it properly, you get killed by the jumping dude. It's infuriating because this mushroom just follows you wherever you go. And you have to get up there, you have to get to that one specific tunnel because all the other tunnels lead you back to the beginning. So this part is literally here to eat at your lives and stop you from progressing. The momentum in this part just makes this so hard. Dead. Dead. Missed the jump. And dead. Finally, the end in sight. Hit rate and defeat rate? What? 
Whatever, this is the last level, we're about to do it! So, this is the last bus. Look familiar to anyone? This has to be one of the only custom things I can recognize in this game. Maybe I'm mistaken and this model is also ripped from something, but I have no idea what it could possibly be ripped from. I know one thing for sure, that's not Bowser. But I ain't gonna take this laying down, take this! What? Jumping on it kills you? Oh, I see. This is one of those things that requires pixel-perfect timing and precision. After dying to this guy about a hundred times, I finally realize that you have to jump on him right as he's firing at you. Then, and only then, can you actually jump on him. Just before? Dead. Just after? Dead. Timing's just a little bit off? Dead. So not only is this incredibly difficult, but you have to hit him ten times! TEN! What did the guy who made this want? Did he, did he just want people to give up? Oh my god! Finally, I did it! That's enough of that one! Next on the list here, we got New Super Mario World. Take an action in funny adventures of resilient Mario Bros. Go through magic forest, creepy dungeon, and sunny hills. Help Mario and Luigi to jump over huge abysses, fast flowing rivers, and climb on moving platforms. Collect crystals and bonuses on your way! Beat all bosses with Mario! Don't worry, if you lose, try again! Practice! Success will help you on your way. Yes, success generally does help you on your way. I think my expectations are pretty low at this point. Hey, looks like there's actually a two-player mode on this one. That's pretty cool, but let's just stick with one player for now. Well, the first thing I noticed is that this isn't a Mario game. It looks like instead of coins, you have to collect these here gems. And you can pick up crates? So we also adding warehouse worker to Mario's resume? Whoa! Mario's got a cannon for an arm! He's like the next rookie of the year! What? You can't hit the blocks that are above you? I'm not even joking, you just pass right through them as if they're not even there. Look, you can even go through them on the way back down. Wow! Don't mess with Mario! He's got a grudge. Look, you can even pull a Metal Gear and hide inside the box. Even though it does nothing. Da 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 da. This is absolutely no purpose. You know, the game feel for this game isn't that bad, actually. It controls exponentially better than the other bootleg. I can actually judge where I'm about to land and make jumps with pretty good precision. Wait, what? You can't jump on enemies? Isn't that the defining characteristic of Mario games? Yeah, you can't jump on anything. What's up with that? Instead, you have to use these boxes to take out any of the enemies you come across. Also, Mario seems to make a weird squeaking sound whenever he gets hurt. And he has hearts and... and fists? What game is this? In fact, it seems like you can take a total of five hits before you die. You can even pick up these medkits. Medkits in a Mario game, who'd have thought? It actually took me a little while to figure out I was picking up items like fists. Then I started to press some other buttons and... Holy crap, what did this turn into? Mega Man or Street Fighter? Hadouken! Hadouken! Nobody can stand in my way, I'm Mario with superpowers! Yeah! And I can feel it, I'm almost a Bowser. I did it, here we go! Oh my god, here we go! Gotta feel it, gotta feel it! I can do this, I can do this! Oh wait, never mind. It's easy. Ah yes, it appears this game is ripped from something else completely. It appears to be ripped from some game called Squirrel King? I can't even make this stuff up! There is a bootleg Sega Mario game ripped from a game called Squirrel King based on Chippendale? It plays exactly the same. Pick up crates, throw crates, jump around, avoid enemies. They even rip most of the enemies straight from this game. That and the music. It's like somebody actually took the time to redo a lot of Mario sprites for this game. So it goes from this Mario aesthetic where we are fighting Goombas and Bowser to... Jungle Land? And mysteriously, all the Mario aesthetics besides Mario himself are gone. Never again will you encounter Mario enemies. I declare now that you shall only fight... Ostrich on unicycle? Piggy in helicopter suit? Rhino who rides elevators? Demon ghost bull? Circus elephant? You know... It's okay man, take your time. Just, no, no, no. We're cool. Just take your time. 
Actually, this circus elephant is the last boss of the game, and he's no joke. He's actually pretty randomized. He jumps around wherever he wants, so no one counters the same. So it took me a little while to beat him. But no enemy has ever been fierce enough to best the hamster. I lied. After beating the boss, you get this really cute introduction to all the enemies, which I'm pretty sure is ripped straight from Squirrel King. <laughs> Look at this guy, he looks like walking chicken legs. And with that, it's back to the title screen. You know, that game wasn't actually too bad. At least it played like a game. Not a Mario game, but at least the mechanics were pretty solid. It was alright. Next up on the list, we have a Russian bootleg that goes by the name Mario 4, A Space Odyssey. Yup. Now I've actually neglected to mention the condition the games were in when I got them. It was bad. This new Super Mario World cart was actually the only cart that would fit inside the Sega Genesis. All the other games worked, I just had to do some... manual reconstruction. Look, this one actually has a story when you turn it on. Looks like I'm gonna have to translate this though because I don't speak any Russian. Mario and Luigi were watching the stars in the night sky, but a star falling behind the mushroom hill has attracted their attention. Mario and Luigi immediately went there. Coming closer, they saw that it was not a star, but a spacecraft. The creature inside told them that on their galaxy there was a threat. If Mario does not stop the conqueror of galaxies with his army, the Mushroom Kingdom will also be doomed. Great! Uh... Yeah... This is Mario 4's Space Odyssey. I don't even really know where to start with this one. I think that first I have to mention how bad the controls are again. Mario's back to having this really weird momentum mechanic again, so you have to run across a flat area for a while in order to build up speed to jump further. I don't know why these games have this mechanic, it's really weird and jarring. Does nobody here know how to program a run button? It's, just, it's a button! You press it! You go fast! Ah oh, crap, I died again! Excuse me, Ashar Geiger alien. You could you you could go now because this is easily the most disturbing thing I've seen in a while. Okay, well, never never mind. This game is almost more like a traditional Mario platformer. Go from left to right fighting Goombas, Shy Guys, and even Boos. The only difference that I can speculate on is that collecting coins actually has a purpose. Whenever you press the start button, it looks like you're at a store where you can spend your coins. That's actually not a bad idea, that totally incentivizes me getting all these coins. And it would definitely at least add something unique to this bootleg. Let's just test this out and I'll pick something, how about just the first thing on the list? It crashed. How can one of the main mechanics of your game not work? Whoever developed this is a monster. It's it's just one big trick. It's just there to trap you. It just crashes your game so you have to start over. You can never escape. Well, I guess there's no point to me collecting any coins anymore. I'm taking my business elsewhere. I'm taking all my coins over to the coin star. You ain't tricking me again. The game pretty much progresses as you'd expect. There's lots of Mario themed levels, but then eventually it starts getting kind of weird. Remember that that whole alien thing? Yeah. You start getting into these really weird industrial looking levels that have things like... Purple Goombas. Aliens. Alien. My speculation is that we are on some sort of alien planet. Oh man, let me use my Star Trek phaser. That's what it's called, right? Oh man, oh man, it's, it's an alien, all right. Wow, this music is not even annoying. We have to be getting close to the end of this game. There's only so much a man can take. This is the last boss. He almost looks like the other guy from the other bootleg, but it looks like he kind of went crazy and then put some dentures in. This guy's actually not too hard to beat. You just kind of have to keep jumping on him from the middle section here. If you do it anywhere but the middle, you'll definitely die. Almost got him, almost got him, yeah! Wow, what a great game. You know, Mario 4 was actually the only game that had an ending to the actual game, like a story-driven ending, not at the end screen. Except, as you know, it's in Russian, and I don't know how to read Russian, and I couldn't find a translation for it online, so I'm going to be making up my own ending to the game. Enjoy. Mario and his army defeated the alien menace, 
It looks like some of them got away though. Peach's castle was looking pretty good, like nothing happened to it from multiple angles. And then Mario and his army went away for a little while on vacation. Papa Mario really needed a drink after all this. And they lived happily ever after. Hey guys, thanks a lot for sticking it out till the end. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, you can always like it and subscribe. I've got a bunch of socials that you can follow. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. It's all in the description. You should follow them. We also got some special thanks to throw out for Patreon supporters. So a very special thanks to Harry Gaynor, Juan Holguin, Caleb Curran, and Lars. If you're looking to watch some more videos, I got two more videos for you right there. My last review, Stone Keep, and we also have the top 10 creepy Easter eggs in video games. You can click those to go to the videos. Don't forget to go to hiddenblock.com for other content creators like myself. And as always, leave your comments and suggestions down in the comment section down below. It's time to go play lots of Dragon Age Inquisition, am I right up top? Oh, no one? Oh.